Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can enhance eyes in Photoshop. So I really like to have a process when I'm retouching eyes, especially in beauty photos, where I kind of brighten them up and add a little bit more color to them just to give them a bit more vibrancy overall. And sometimes when you are photographing, depending on the lighting situation, the camera doesn't always capture eyes at their best. So I always like to have a little tricks up my sleeve in Photoshop that I use to kind of adjust this and making sure that they are looking like they're the focus of the image, which quite often they are. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial today and let's get straight into it. All right guys, so now that we're in Photoshop, we're going to take a look at how you can enhance eyes in a non-destructive way and in a very natural appearing way. Uh, we don't wanna go too far with this. It's all too easy sometimes, especially when retouching eyes to make them look very doll-like. And we kind of wanna avoid that in today's tutorial. So we're gonna really take a natural approach to it. So the first thing that I like to do is to kind of brighten up the iris. And that is this part here of the eye, the colored part. And usually I like to do this by using dodge and burn. I've done so many tutorials on my channel about creating dodge and burn layers. So if you're a little bit unsure about how dodge and burn works, I've got plenty of videos and I've actually just linked in my dodge and burning routine, my updated routine video, which I've got linked in the description box below. So if you're unsure of how to dodge and burn, that video really explains how you can do it. Uh, but in terms of dodging and burning, just a really basic overview, dodge and burn is adding light and shadow to the image in a very controlled way. And by using dodge and burn, we're going to really brighten up and add a little bit more contrast to this particular area of the eye. Now to create your dodge and burn layers, the best way I think to do this is to create adjustment layers using curves. So just by clicking on this little half moon icon down here, just go up to curves and we've now added our first adjustment layer. So you can see in the properties window here, we've got our curves graph, and this first layer is actually going to be our dodging layer. So I'm gonna bring this line right up so the image ends up being quite bright. Then I'm going to hold down Control or Command for a Mac on the keyboard and press I to invert it. So now you can see that our layer mask has been inverted, so you can't actually see the adjustment we've just applied in the adjustment layer with curves. I am going to rename this layer now to dodge. And there's our dodge layer created. So anytime we're going to add a little bit of lightness to the image, we're going to use this particular layer. Now we're gonna repeat the same process again, and this is going to be for our burning layer. So we're going to go to our adjustment layers and to curves, but this time we're going to bring the line down so the image is dark. Now remember to hold down Control or Command I on the keyboard to invert that layer mask, make sure that that is black. And then we're going to rename this to Burn. So anytime that we're going to add shadow to the image, we're going to be using the Burn layer. So to start off, we really want to brighten up the eye. So I'm going to start off on the Dodge layer. I'm going to zoom in a little bit towards the eye. I'm going to select the paintbrush tool on the left hand side here, making sure that it's quite soft and also making sure that the flow is at 1%. We wanna make sure that there's a very controlled amount of dodging that we're going to be applying to the image. And this will especially work well if you're using a graphics tablet. If you're using a mouse, you may also want to adjust the opacity here and make that a bit lower, just so you can gradually build up the brightness in the eye. Also making sure that white is the selected color because we are working with layer masks at the moment. So I'm going to just switch these around or you can press X on the keyboard to do that. So now that we've got white selected, I'm also going to make sure that my brush settings up here are correctly set. So making sure that transfer is ticked and that pen pressure is selected in the drop down menu under opacity jitter. That's another really important uh, technique we need to make sure that is in place because it's all going to add to the control of how we apply the brightness to the image. So now I'm simply going to start to run my brush over the iris area. I'm not going to go overboard with this but I'm really going to focus on the areas that are already kind of being hit by the light. I don't want to lighten too much of the darker areas, but just a little bit. And I'm also going to run the brush over the sclera as well, which is the whites of the eyes, just to make sure that that's all being brightened up. So I'm going to just turn the eye on that layer on and off so you can see how that's really made a difference already. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm gonna turn that on and off and you can see how much of a difference it's made just by adding a bit of dodging to the image. Now we're going to go to the burn layer. I'm making sure I've got my paintbrush tool again and that all the settings are the same. 
I'm actually going to darken up the ring around the iris in this particular photo. So every subject's eyes are going to be different and it's all going to differ the way that you would approach them in terms of brightening them up or uh, adding a little bit more color to them. But in this particular instance, I'm just gonna make my brush size a little bit smaller and just run the brush gently over the ring just to make them stand out even more and just over the shuttered area here as well. I'm also going to gently run the brush over the lashes just to darken them up even more and that will really help the eyes stand out. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. I'm going to turn off and on that layer. So you can see that's just made a small difference but it's just kind of added a little bit more depth back to the eye. I'm actually going to add both of these layers now into a group so you can just hold down control or command on your keyboard and click on the folder icon and we're going to rename this to dodge and burn. So now when I click the arrow here we've got both of our layers in that folder and I'm going to turn off the eye so you can see how much of a difference that's made just by using dodge and burn in that fashion. So you can use it as much or as little as you'd like. Uh, I like to probably go even a little bit less than this, but I still think that this has a fairly natural approach overall. Now zooming in a little bit more, we are going to start to add the color to the eye. So I like to add a little bit of color just to make them pop even more. Uh, sometimes when eyes are captured on camera, they can look a little bit dull depending on the lighting that you might be utilizing at the time. And they don't always look as vibrant as they do in real life. So I want to add a little bit more color. I'm going to just add a new folder here called color. And then I'm actually going to add another layer in here. So just a blank new layer. And we're going to rename this to color as well. So what I really like to do in this instance is make sure that the blending mode of this layer is set to soft light. And this will help any color that we apply on this blank layer uh, be filtered onto the iris in a way that's a little bit softer and more transparent. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration of what I mean. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool over here. I'm also going to go up to window and select color. And that's because I didn't have my color tab visible up the top here. So if you don't have yours visible as well, that's just an easy way to get it back up. And then I'm going to pick a color that's kind of similar, but maybe a little bit more vibrant here. Uh, I might actually go for a few different colors because obviously there's several different colors that stand out in this particular iris. So I'm going to kind of go to maybe like a greeny hazel color, something in between yellow and green. So I'm going to try this one out and we're kind of going to just paint on to the iris. So I'm going to just show you guys what I've done there. I'm going to turn the eye on and off on this layer. So you can see that's just a little bit more vibrant and it just kind of adds that little bit more color overall. Now I'm going to choose a color that's a little bit more similar to the middle ring. So it's a little bit more of a brown, a really warm brown. So something around that color. And then I'm going to run that over, just over the middle part here. Not too much though. And then as a finishing touch, I might match up just the ring area as well. So we might go for a little bit more of a subtle gray blue color and maybe just kind of add that to the ring as well. And you can always just run that just gently over the other area that you've kind of adjusted. So I'm going to zoom out now and I'm going to turn off that color layer. And you can see how much difference that's made with the vibrance now. There are so many ways to uh, make the color more impactful on the eyes. You can use an adjustment layer and you can use masking to do this. There's so many different ways. You can even just simply bring up a vibrance adjustment layer and mask it in if you wish. There's lots of different ways to do this. I personally like being a little bit more detailed with my beauty shots and I like kind of adding the color in in this way. And if you feel that maybe the color is not vibrant enough, you can change the blend mode to maybe overlay instead of soft light or hard light for example I think that might look a little bit unnatural in this case but even if you want to soften it further you can actually adjust the opacity a little bit more so say we don't want it to have it at 100% we can kind of move it down to maybe 70 or 80% and then it still kind of looks a little bit natural you can kind of move it down a bit further if you want and now I'm going to take a quick snapshot to show you guys a before and after. So this is the before 
and then this is the after. So it can really make a big difference. Like I said, you can take even more of a natural approach to this, or you can go even further depending on the style of image that you're working on. But like I said, this is a very non-destructive way of doing this. It's very easy to go back and change your adjustments. And that's mainly the way I like to work in Photoshop, as most of you will probably know. And this is a way that I really like to add a bit of color back into the image, a bit of warmth, and also uh, a little bit of contrast and brightness as well. So you can go back to any of these layers and adjust the opacity. If you want to kind of bring down the brightness again, you can do that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this Photoshop tutorial today. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you do. I'll be posting a lot more Photoshop tutorials on here in future. And please let me know in the comment section below what you want to see on my channel. I'm always up for requests, especially Photoshop tutorials. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.